Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's word to you today, the 1st of May. Praise God. Hey, welcome to the month of May. And listen, if you haven't joined the prayer meeting that we're having right now, come on, just get in immediately. Praise God. Join us. Join the next prayer meeting at the next watch. God is doing a lot and bringing us a lot of information. Praise God. And, and see, if you don't live your life by the word of God, then trust me, you are building a life that you will regret. And that's why we always encourage you, look, stay glued to the word. Find the word. Get it. You can never get enough of the word. Get information. Solomon speaking by the, the word of his father David, he said, get wisdom, get understanding. See, get it, praise God. So listen, join us because this month is a special month and there's, there's this word the Lord has given to us concerning this month. He is fulfilling every word he has spoken concerning us. And let me tell you this, as we approach the end time, or what we call the day of the Lord, what is going on is He is fulfilling every word that He has spoken to us. And this month, we are beginning to look at um, what, what God has said to us, made in His image. Made in His image. And that's the word the Lord is giving to us concerning this month, that we are made in His image. Now, what does that mean? That's okay, we're made in His image. So how is that a word? How is that a prophecy? Hey, when God says we are made in His image, He's reminding us of who we are. And I believe as we go into this month, because I'm going to be teaching, I'm going to be teaching on, on this, um, this month. And you know how we do it? We start until the Lord says, okay, move to something else. I'm going to be sharing with you some thoughts that they will provoke your mind to learn. They will provoke your mind to think and meditate on God's word. Listen, are you not tired of living a low life? Aren't you just tired of, of struggling and trying to be something that you don't even know what you're being? Meanwhile, God, your Father, have prepared everything for you. I'll show you a scripture. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. The Lord gave me this word. And it's going to be our theme scripture for this month. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. It says, For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Hallelujah. We are God's workmanship. We are, we are his workmanship. And we were created unto good works, not bad works, good works. So what does that mean? The result of my life has to be good. The product of my life, every action I take, the product of that action, it's supposed to be good. Now that's what is proof that I'm walking according to that which God has made me for. So if, if the product of my life is wrong or is bad, it's a testimony that I'm not walking in the place that God has ordained for me to walk in. I'm not walking in the path that he has chosen for me to walk in, walk in because it says, for we are his workmanship. He made us. He made us. And why did he made us? He created us in Christ Jesus for good work. The purpose of our creation, the purpose of our existence is for good works. Not bad works. Not any works. Good works. Praise God. And he says, so now he doesn't just create us and push us, go do good works. No, he says, which, those good works, 
God has prepared them beforehand. That we should walk in them. So, now, you are here. There is a good work that has been prepared beforehand. And before, that good work was created before you were made. Now you are made for those good works. And don't you realize why it's important that you trust the Holy Spirit to guide you into those good works that He has prepared ahead of time for you. Now this should be the focus of your prayers this month, especially this month. This should be the focus of your prayer every day, no matter what you do. But you see, because God is staring us into that place of his purpose. He's bringing you back into that place of his purpose. You connecting yourself, what I'm teaching you right now, you connecting yourself with the Spirit of God for this purpose, it's going to make a lot of things easy for you. Now, the turning around part might be the difficult part because it's, it's going to affect a lot of things, especially in your soul. But the moment you submit your heart to the Lord to obey Him and to just trust the Spirit of God, then you will walk in paths that have become easy for you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Listen, life is not hard. Life is not hard. Don't say, ah, man, life is terrible. No, it's not. It's not. I always tell people this. The day you realize you're struggling to eat and you're struggling for covering. Now, what does that mean, covering? Clothes to put on, house to live in, anything that covers you. You see these two things, the day you see or you find yourself struggling concerning these two things is a clear indication that you have shifted from God's purpose for your life. Oh yes, that's the truth. If you realize that you're finding it difficult to eat, you have to beg before you eat. If you realize that you cannot afford to pay um, your house rent um, and the bills of the house or um, or you can't even have clothes to wear it's a clear indication that you have stepped out of god's purpose and will for your life now that also includes if you have to steal to eat if you have to steal to 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 have a house or have a roof over your head if you have to do the wrong things to get them. It's, see, as long as you're struggling to get them, as long as you're getting out of line to get them, you are not where God wants you to be. It's as simple. Take it from me. Just go. Just, just Instead of trying to struggle again this month, just pause and say, okay, Lord, you know what? I, I think I'm out of line. And I just want to come back to you. And I trust that you will guide me back into my purpose. I'm telling you the truth, the moment you realize these things don't come easy for you, food to eat, covering, the moment you realize it's not easy for you anymore. If it used to be easy in a particular place, but now you find that it's no more easy for you, I tell you the truth, Take some time out to fast and pray. And you're fasting and pray, oh God, give me food. Oh God, supply for me. Oh God, give me my house rent. No. Your prayer is supposed to be, Lord, I think I have gone out of line with your purpose. Is it that God wants you to move from where you are now? And that could be activity-wise, location-wise. Or God, uh, or you got in there by yourself. Now it's easy to know if it was easy before and now it's no more easy, then you, you should have an understanding that God wants you to move. Maybe there's something better God has planned for you, but maybe your mind is not taking it. Most times, the challenge we have is, is to do with our minds. God is big, but your mind sometimes does not accommodate His mightiness. So we try to limit God with our little minds, see? 
God is telling you move forward. You're thinking forward to where? See? And those are things you need to you need to purge yourself of. If there is any limitation in my mind concerning God's plan for my life, let that limitation drop. If, if my mind has become so small that I cannot picture what God is saying, let those things that have become a limitation around my mind, let them fall off. That's the prayer you should be praying today. That's the prayer you should be praying now in this season of your life. There's so much God wants to accomplish with your life. I'm telling you the truth. So much. Bigger than what you can even imagine. Some of you, you just think you're kings in the location where you find yourself. You just feel you're, you don't realize that there is much more. Now you're so glad God has brought you here. But brothers and sisters, there is much more he wants to accomplish in your life. Let me tell you to the extent. The extent to which God wants to accomplish in your life is this. Till the whole world see you. Yes, God's destiny and plan for your life is still the whole world see you. Whatever you are doing, whatever you're engaged in, whatever, that's God's plan for your life. Will the whole world know everybody? Of course. It's possible for the whole world to know everybody. No, there are some of us that are called into the backside. You know, hey, hey, hey. The whole world knowing you doesn't necessarily mean the whole world will see your face and you'll see your picture. But the whole world will feel your impact. Yeah. You can be a producer of something that is blessing the whole world. See? They don't really see your face. They may not even know your name. But that thing that you're producing is of use in every continent of the world. So when I say till the whole world see you, I'm not just talking about till the whole world see your face. So it's not about putting your face on social media and, and promoting it. No, no, no. There is a work God has ordained, God has designed before you were born. There is a work He has prepared ahead of time. He has prepared before time so that you will walk in it. Can you listen? The Spirit of God is speaking in this light because He wants to get you into that place. So, can you agree with Him according to the words of John? If we walk in the light as He is, in the life. If I'm telling you God wants to show you something big, would you just believe Him and walk in the light as He is in the light? And say, Lord, I think I've limited you for so long. I tear off that limit. Lord, I'm free. I'm free right now. Let me. Now, some of you, you think it. it you know how we count achievement as something big and you feel that's all you can achieve in life uh -uh. Uh -uh. and hear me it's not too late to start so I'll say ah i think if i was younger no sir not with god not with god as the word of god is coming to you today is another opportunity for you to start hear me let this month of maybe a new starting point for you you can forget the past, forget the past failures. Listen, listen, if you have tried things that didn't work before, you know that has a way of, of, of bringing you down. You know, trust the devil. You know him now. Praise God. We're not ignorant of his devices. He's the one that will come and tell him, you want to try another thing again? It will fail like the others. Well, hear me. Even though you think those things failed, it, the record might be different with God. You see, because you are the one who thinks this is the beginning and this is the end of a thing. So if, if I start this thing, I must end it here. But not so with God. God's end might be in the middle. Oh yes, God's end might be in the middle. I had this testimony of Kenneth Copeland and he had shared how God wanted him to go to a robot university. And for two years, he was struggling with that because he didn't have the money 
to pay the fees and then he, he he was 30 years old how how will a 30 year old man go back to school and and oh dear he, he he fought it and fought it and fought it and fought it how many years maybe three years maybe four years of being in school how am i going to cope how am i going to do all that and then eventually after two years of struggling he he got an inner to agreement with the lord and said lord i'll do it i'll do it and god began to provide money for him he was able to register in the first semester and then he started school and while he was doing his registration he met our robots on one of the days he went to do his registration and 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 he, he according to what he said he, he said he he walked up there and that's the floor where our robots office is he walked up there and he just he just he just thought to himself because he was already a pilot being trained by the air force you know so he just thought about it that let me mention here you know that i can fly airplanes because our robot had an airplane then so he was just mentioning to the lady he said well i just thought to say that i have a, my pilot's license my flying license so just in case they need a pilot around here i'm here and then he he just heard from his back you said what <laughs> praise god he turned and he saw a robot standing right behind him. I said, yeah, what did you say? Ah, okay. So he repeated what he said. Then our robot said, so you're the one the Lord told me was coming. He told me that he's sending in a pilot with the new students. And that was how immediately he was drafted in to begin to fly our robot. And then he, he, he said something. He said, I think after the second semester or so, the word of the Lord came to him that you're done with school. Ah! Now he began to struggle again. He began to say, look, I think this is another attempt at failure. Because he's had some things that were like failures before now. So now God, he, he was hearing the Lord tell him, you're done with school. How can you say I'm done with school? I started school and then after one semester, you're telling me I'm done with school. How? Does that even make sense? Now his mind was now going in that direction of failure again. See? Failure again. But it took him a while then the Lord convinced him. I said, no, you're done. So you see, he struggled for two years. Because in his mind, he was battling how he was going to accomplish three years or four years in that school. But then, the Lord just wanted him to get to meet Dr. Robert. And the moment that was accomplished, which was accomplished in the first few weeks of being in school, praise God. Now, say, so why didn't God just tell him straight that I want you to? You see, that's the thing. God didn't tell him straight because... He too would have thought of it, of it being in How me? Who am I? How do I meet this man? So God said, get in line. Go join the school. Okay, I'll go join the school. And, and now that's the thing with a lot of people. The Lord tells them a thing, but they conclude with their own mouths. They conclude with their own senses. So sometimes, you know, you, you hear people say something. So the Lord told me this. Now, if you listen closely, to what they are saying you will understand that they heard something from the lord but they are the ones bringing the conclusion to what they heard and most times is that their conclusion that we have a problem with not what god told them but if we can just understand because we have the same spirit that's why when 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 people say god told me something or god did something to me if you don't understand what they are saying instead of fighting them why don't you pause withdraw and say okay lord um, I don't quite understand what this person is saying. And he said, you told him. Can you explain it to me? If God spoke to him, the same God will explain it to you. You see? And then we will now understand ourselves according to truth, not according to their words. Did you get that? Praise God. So, hey, get that limiting thought out of your mind right now. Get it out. And open your heart and say, Lord, I trust every work you want to do in me. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Can you just lift up your hands where you are right now? And I pray for you, Holy Spirit. 
You are the one bringing to fulfillment the work of God on the earth. I pray that in this month, our testimony shall be that God's children were brought into their place and their purpose in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for this. I declare the gate of this month open. Begin to deal with us, Lord, according to your purpose. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Like I said earlier, join the next prayer watch and God will do you good. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you.